this is Anna Diffin Teaches from the depths, Diddy Blade Hover, or Making Ships Float Like Bricks Don't. To start with, what we want, you need to go into building mode, and then, quite simply, put on memory mode, and add on several pylons to put the Diddy Blades on. I'm going to be placing these in the corners of the ship, so I'm going to place it on four to start with. So, just, just add on a few beams. Let's go from here. Now it is useful, but not vital, that all these beams are at the same orientation in the ship. As you can see, these are all at the same height. It can be done without them being at the same height, but it just makes life a little bit easier if they are all exactly the same. So, now I have all four in location. Now I need to go to air, and then go to Diddy Blade Heli Spinners. And for each of these, I'm going to place them again at the corners of the ship. Just like this. And it doesn't matter too much whereabouts these are placed. The reasons I'm utilising these is that they are, as it says, have no not moving, no moving parts in the physics simulation. That means that when I place the blades on like so, although they will seem to be rotating when it's actually operating, they aren't actually moving. So the block will always be in this location. This does reduce lag and stuff, but importantly uh, no, to note is that I could actually place blocks either side like this, completely enclosing it, and it will still rotate happily because as far as the game is concerned, the Dirty Blade is only in this location here. Well, this does mean it is actually very possible to create incredibly dense motors, because what I can do, I can place the rotors just like this, and place them all in a line like so, and they will all operate without any problem whatsoever, all rotating through each other, each generating lift. So I've simply added on several of the rotors here, don't require too many, and now I need to configure each one. So let's go edit them and go, I want them in continuous mode and I also want the drive, motor drive to be maximum as this will provide the most amount of thrust. It does use engine power in order to do this though. If I just left it at this, it will still rotate but won't actually operate very powerfully. So just put it all up to 10 to provide the most thrust possible. This will mean that very small dirty blades such as these should actually provide enough thrust to lift this ship out of the water. So that's all these blades configured. Now, as you can obviously see, they aren't rotating. The best way to operate these are via control blocks. So, the ACBs. I'm just going to place these on top. As I said, it doesn't matter where I place them. I can place them here because they won't interfere with rotation. And you actually really want at least two automated blocks per blade. So one to operate it high for when it's like too low at such as it is, and then the other to turn it off or reduce the rotation speed when it gets to the height you wish the ship to float at. So to configure these, I want them to activate um, based on altitude, but not just altitude because Altitude, if I go across, say, the mountain over there, it will in, it will actually just do absolute altitude and crash into it. For big airship designs, this is, might be beneficial because you don't want them to be changing height so much, but this, because I'm having it hover maybe about 50 meters above the ground, when it comes to a mountain range like that, I want it to fly over it, not just smash straight into it. So, I want the height above this here, and the effect range, I want to keep it short, so it's only affecting the nearby rotor. So, it actually only needs two in this location, but I'll just do three for convenience sake. And I want it to go 50, and then activate the spin blocks. And then I want them to set rotation speed. And plus 30, like that. Now you can see immediately the ship is rotating up. 
So I'm just going to put push up into caps lock mode to hold in position while I configure all of these. And now this one, what I want to do is have a similar thing. So if height above ground or sea level is greater than the input, say just again, so there, spin block, set rotation speed, and now it is above the ground, I actually want it to only go a lot slower. So as you can see as it drops, it will spin up and then it will go a lot lower. The height though is based, uh, oops, forgot to actually set that as 50. There we go. So the height is based as to the exact location of these spin blocks. So let's just go configure the others. You can actually prefab these designs. So if I just remove all these existing control blocks, if I prefab these, they will be the same for everything else. So let's just capture a prefab. Let's clear this one. It's going to be too wide, height of one. Begin capture process. So now, if I just place this by this one, it will instantly operate that blade and this blade. And this blade like so. So now if we move from there, you can see it's tilting down at the front just while it, it is getting into operational. Now, as you can see, the ship is actually tilting forwards at the moment. And this is because the thrusts I have in place are nowhere near strong enough. So I can operate with additional thrusts here. So I'm just going to increase the power of the Deadly Blade. So let's just go completely over the top and add a couple more spinners here. And I'll actually copy this over to the rest of the rotors. Uh, near enough for correct. I'm just going to copy, the, copy and paste these to all of the corners. This will now provide more than enough thrust to keep the ship airborne so long as the engine power can hold out, which unfortunately it cannot. So I'm just gonna quickly load a engine in, quickly put it on there for this testing purposes. So now you can see the ship will keep itself stable as it gets above 50. So if it gets above 51, it will turn on the rotors. If it gets below, it will level it out but as you can see it's pretty unstable at the moment it is hovering and now I can all I need to do is add thrusters on this to make it fly where I would like but this instability is a little bit annoying so I'm just gonna slowly increase this up by having them still rotate ever so slowly, it still provides a small amount of thrust to even out this instability. Though, and through more uh, fun functional controls, like more granulating controls of having more ACBs, like gradually increasing uh, or reducing the speed of the rotations as it gets closer to the height you wish it to float at, it will reduce how wobbly this is though the only real way to completely eliminate this is utilizing PID systems and thrusters though we can actually emulate some remove some of this by utilizing the actual thrusters themselves the jet stabilizers as these automatically have P like a, essentially like a PID system already installed so if it includes a load of these they will actually help reduce the wobble. So those few jet stabilizers have made this almost stable. Next, we need to actually add a thrust on. So let's just add on some big jet engines. And then add on some rotational ones here as well. The ones behind, I want to Behind the center of mass, you need to put into thrust reverse, like so. So now, if I just go into the V menu for the ship, I can actually say, use 
jet swirl in air and water mode. And if I give this ship a command, it will now utilize those thrusters to fly around like so. The great setup with this is that if these rotors do get shot off and it lands back in the water, it will still function as normal. All I have done is added on the additional thrusters. One thing to note though, it is always best to have additional redundancy. I consider four being the absolute minimum for this setup. What you would want, you'd probably want at least six and ensure that your ship can fly on maybe about half of the rotors because otherwise these are very, very weak to damage and could very easily get shot off. So if I just use the explode thing, take it off, as you can see, immediately the ship begins to falter and fall out of the sky. It's only until it gets repaired again that it comes back up and starts functioning again. So it is very important to have additional redundancy with a Deadly Blade setup. But you can actually have these Deadly Blades fully enclosed. As I mentioned previously, the way it all functions is that these only exist in these locations here. I can fully protect these blocks. So we go all the way around. And as you can see, the blocks are rotating perfectly fine and still providing lift more than adequate to lift the ship. You can do this throughout the entire ship and make them what's referred to as internal deadly blades. And that is because these deadly blades will still provide lift even if they are fully enclosed. They don't require any sort of air gap whatsoever, unlike the jets here, which if you place something in front of them, do lose thrust, you see. Due to placement of block force, output is reduced in scale. This is not the case with Deadly Blades. And there you have it. This show, it shows how you can use Deadly Blades to make absolutely anything fly. They're incredibly powerful for how little power they use. As you can see, when they're fully operational, they're only using a few hundred power. Compared to the jets required to lift something like this, you'd require a vast number. It saves in both resources for the cost of building them and also in the size of engines you require to lift something as large as a battleship and this is how you can lift absolutely enormous things with very minimal effort so thank you very much for watching and i shall see you next time until then